the What to Read Next podcast helps you build a TBR of future favorite books. In each episode, Lauren and Maine interviews authors and book influencers to recommend books they loved for you to pick up today. If you're an avid reader, always looking for your next favorite read, then this show is Hi, Julia. Welcome to What to Read Next podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm really happy to be back. So happy to have you back. So you have graduated from college. You finished your Roman study. So we got to talk about that. Like you did a whole study about Roman readers. Um, and now you're entering the workforce. So there's a lot of like fun changes happening. So tell us what you've been up to. <laughs> what I give yeah, you? Yeah, <laughs> you summed it up, but I graduated college. I published my romance reader study and I've gotten a lot of really good feedback from it. Mm -hmm. I went to Steamy Lit Con this summer. Yeah. I've done a lot of really cool things that I didn't think having a random book bookstagram would take me to this place, but I'm here now and it feels amazing. But like you said, I'm trying to enter the workforce in the job hunt. It can be a lot, yeah. especially when you're applying to work at publishers, but I'm so close I can taste it. And either way, I'm having fun doing other bookish projects. I'm taking on a line editor job right now. So oh. I've been line editing like a romance book for an indie author. And that's been really cool. So I've been doing like little things here and there to, to keep busy while I wait from these that's publishers. That's the way to go. I was just having a conversation with another author. We're just talking about writing projects. Just like, when you submit, you should write something else. It's just like dating. When you're dating, you like someone you like you date other people too. Like you keep your fillers up there. Exactly. You, don't put, you don't put all the eggs in one basket because it becomes so stressful. And when things don't happen to you, you're like, it's devastating. But if you have like multiple eggs and multiple baskets, you just like, oh, okay. It's a no, not yet. Maybe something else will pop up. And then the, when the thing that we want comes in, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm ready for it. <laughs> Yeah, it rolls off your back. Like you said, yeah. it's not keeping all your eggs in one basket. And like when I was really close to getting a position back in um, June, yeah, and it was like a three month process and yeah. three interviews, five references, a whole thing. And I didn't end up getting it, but I learned through that I couldn't make my entire life being job applicant, Julia, the job applicant. It had to become Julia who was doing all this other stuff. And then is also applying to jobs. Yeah. It's a learning curve. And it, it sounds obvious, but like at the time, like I was constantly checking my email and like doing all this versus now I have all these other things I'm doing. So it feels a little less stressful. Yeah, it like it takes practice. I think like when you're first starting out, it's like so daunting. You're just like, oh my gosh, I'm ready for it. I need to work. I need to hustle. I need to do this. And it takes practice. It takes a lot of landing that first job is the hardest one. And then everything else works itself out and opportunities will roll in and you roll and you mature and you accept it. And there's going to come a time where your job is not, not your identity and it's what is happening. Exactly. <laughs> but that's part of the process of being in your early 20s and trying to figure out your sense in the world, like who you are and what you wanted to do and how you want to spend your time. And so it's a really exciting time too. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it feels weird because I'm only 23, but I always feel like I'm older just because I'm the oldest cousin of nine, of yeah. nine human cousins who all lived within five miles in DC. I'm used to being the oldest, so it just feels weird that I'm doing all these firsts that no one yeah. else has done out of the cousin. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's just, it's wild. It's, I think it's a good lesson in anything that don't put all your eggs in one basket. Try to keep things open. Like you said, it's like dating. I actually wrote an awesome cover letter where I basically said that marketing books is akin to matchmaking yeah. because you essentially are matching readers with the right book. Yeah. And I've gotten a lot of reception on that cover letter because they told me to add more personality to it. So it is so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the art, the, uh, there's an art to write cover letters. It's, it is, it like, is amazing. You know, so one of the things I personally avoid them now. I got to the point where I don't need a cover letter unless I have like, you, you do a career switch and you're actually like have to justify it but it, it is an art and I love and sometimes we recycle them like we're like we just update here and there and it's just another job it's another match job searching is just like dating it's you just only need to find the one for that moment not forever for that moment and so you just have to pull your feelers a bunch of places yeah my mom said that it's not going to be as good or as bad as you think it's going to be yeah 
And I was like, that is so wise because it makes a lot of sense. It's, yeah. it's not going to be everything you lived for, but it's also yeah. not going to be God awful either. Either whatever yeah. happens, you'll be okay. You have a good head on your shoulders. You have a good family behind you. I'm very fortunate that I have the ability to not worry too much about rent because I'm living with my parents right now. But yeah, so are you doing good? How are you doing? I'm doing good. I am doing good. I actually, work is fine. Books is fine. Now reading, reading like a different place. But overall, it's been a, it's been a good change. I, I deal with a lot of personal growth. I went through a period of healing with childhood trauma, which is like the things that keep popping up. And so I did EMDR for that. And it's been so healing and transformative. And so it's entering this like new era, relaxing and easing your way into life, meditating, which is, this is where we are. Uh, All about holistic living. It isn't, it isn't. Because it's like, it's about coming back to yourself and listening to your intuition and trusting that like wise mind that wants the best God for you as opposed to your emotional mind and your logical mind who are like have like different intentions, but your wise mind just wants the best for you. And so it's letting go. I, there's there's a breath of just release. <laughs> I can consume drama in other places, but I don't have drama in my life. That's the best way I can describe it. That's why I love romance books. It's drama that's not happening to me. Yeah. <laughs> And it always ends in a happy out, happily ever after. So you exactly. know it's everything's gonna work itself out. <laughs> exactly. That's what I love about romance. It's like the world can be a terrible place sometimes. So it's just yeah. lovely that in this world people can find love. And yeah. it makes me happy. I'm such a sap. Like my mom's <laughs> my mom used to call me Miss Hallmark as a kid. Yeah. I was always Miss Cheesy quotes here and there. But yeah, I know. Wild. There we go. And let's talk about Steamy Lid. What did you enjoy about it? Was it? It was just, it was so cool. It was like a culmination of my two years on the platform. And I just had some funny stories. I still haven't posted about it to my Instagram. (laughs) I'm such a bad influencer. I have fun and I meet people and I do the connections and I'm doing all the stuff behind the scenes. But I'm pretty bad at actually posting. I haven't posted just because I I didn't want to, I don't know. I just didn't want it to just be generic. I've been compiling like a list of funny moments that happened because yeah. I think that is what's going to set me apart a little bit and, and will be more interesting for people. I had someone who ran up to me and yelled, check this shit. <laughs> <laughs> and it was freaking hilarious. And I cackled, like I bent over laughing and I could not stop laughing. And I didn't know who it was because she uh, goes without a face on her Instagram, but yeah. we had conversations. So she, it was genius. She had a pin with her her little thing right here with yeah. all her information. So people would see the pin. They're like, oh, I know you. But yeah. I didn't know. So having some random person who I didn't know running up to me and yelling, check with his shit. And someone else yelled clits at me. Just those <laughs> things. It was just, it was fun. It was like, there was one night where we stayed up till 2 a.m. making friendship bracelets. It was really cute. Yeah, it was a cute thing. I'm definitely going to try to go next year. But yeah, it was just it was a nice way to put myself out there and network and meet people because yeah. I feel like people my age, I, I keep on joking that I need to make a club for 23 year olds who don't know how to socialize because of the pandemic and college yeah. being all weird because of that. So it was like, it was very healing to a part of myself. And I talked to other people who were like, I haven't really been out of the house in a while. This is so nice. And it yep. was just, it was really cute. Yeah. I think we're just emerging. I like emerging from that bubble. I'm still like, I actually, I think we met last year. So I was living in Tampa, but before that I live in, I lived in New York and then I moved to Chicago right before the pandemic, like two weeks before the pandemic, like the shutdown happened. So I was like, The first two weeks, I was like living it up. I went to happy hour. I went to like fitness classes. I went to job interviews. It was like living my best life. And then the pandemic happened and everything shut down. And I was like, what am I supposed to do? (laughs) I didn't know. I didn't know anyone. I was like, okay, I'm just like in this beautiful apartment stuck in a strange city. I had no idea. And it happened to be a time where the podcast took off because the publishing, the way publishing worked, I was doing author interviews and there were pretty much it like 
author tours were shut down because they couldn't travel they couldn't do any of the physical events and so publicists were like hey you have a podcast can we send so and so this and so I went from having a once a week kind of show to seven days a week <laughs> like it was like so all my interactions were on zoom and all the different people like I started making friends on zoom and it was all zoom related and I lived in that bubble I ended up moving to to Tampa and it still took me, it's taken me two years to finally settle down and be like, okay, I want to have make friends here. I am going to go to a book club or I'm going to go to a fitness class. I'm going to go. But even that, the, the effort that because we're such stuck in a bubble <laughs> for so long, this, oh, I got to make friends with people now and have small talk and try to figure out, can we be friends? Can we talk more beyond this time? It's a process. It's not, I think we were stunted and I can imagine missing college and having that experience where you're just like, where your whole world is just like school, friends, hang out, maybe work, maybe internships. And it's like having that shut down, it would be shocking. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. For some people, I think they were able to operate pretty normally, which is yeah. dangerous, yeah. but I am immunocompromised. So I had to be very careful. Yeah. So when people were starting to hang out and have parties and do all this stuff, I had to say no because I just couldn't risk it. Yeah. But that's also when I, I wouldn't have gotten as into reading as I am yeah. now as if, if the pandemic didn't happen. Because I only started reading in early 2019 as I was finishing high school. Because yeah. I hated reading growing up. Absolutely hated it. Every book was miserable and blah, 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 blah. But then I found a book. I actually was on Amazon. I found, saw a cover of The Hating Game. And I was like, that looks cute. I got it. I read it. And then I became obsessed. But then I took a break for the first semester of college. And then second semester, we were sent home. And yeah. it became all reading all the time. Yeah, it's crazy. But then you build the community. You build like a sense of a potential career. You build like a, some, like a, you took that hobby and created something and made friends. I, I am really happy of how it's progressed. I haven't grown like immensely in followers this year, but I've met so many people and I've done, had so many cool experiences mm -hmm. that it's just been fun. I've just really enjoyed my community and yeah, I just, I'm very fortunate and everyone in my book club, I love them all so much. And it's just, it's nice. And like you said, because publishing was taking this shift and everything closed down, publicists are starting to look for people like a podcast host or for me, a book club host who did virtual events. That suddenly became like a great way to grow your platform and to help authors get their books out there. Yep. So let's chat some book recommendations. We got some rom-com recommendations because your chiclet is the shit. You might as well <laughs> It was our version of Chick Lit, right, in 2023, which is rom-coms. <laughs> so. Exactly. Okay, so I came up with a list. I tried to do a mix of some books that have been out for a bit, and then also some that are newish. Um, for book number one, uh, Teacher of the Year by M.A. Wardell. I love M.A. Wardell. Um, he's actually a member of the book club. Well, not constantly, but he was before the book came out. Mm -hmm. And the reason I picked it is because kindergartners are really funny and the kids in the book are so freaking funny and chaotic and they cause all this drama for the leads that's so wholesome and so fun. But then the book also has lots of spice too. It's like a yeah. great, it's a great book. I recommend it to anyone. It's a male romance where a, a teacher, a kindergarten teacher has like a romance with a single father of one of the kids. So it's really cute. I highly recommend, and Emmy Wardell is an amazing friend. Definitely recommend. Book number two is Lizzie Blake's Best Mistake by Maisie Eddings, which is to this day the only book with the surprise pregnancy trope that I will read because <laughs> all the other ones stress me out. Like, I can't finish it. But it's really good because Lizzie is just really funny, and I thought it was a wonderful representation of what it's like to have ADHD as a woman, especially, and people telling you that you are too loud or, or that you take up too much space as a woman. I think a lot of people can relate to that. So I think it's just fun and it's delightful, and there's a lot of hijinks that happen when you're pregnant. I wouldn't know. I've never been pregnant, but like I can imagine. And also, I think Macy Eddings just has amazing comedic timing, and I've done an event for all of the books in the Brush of Love series, and she's wonderful. For book number three, I have Kiss Her Once for Me by Alison Cochran. I love 
Allison and Kiss Her Once For Me is peak bisexual comedy, comedy and I love it. It is so chaotic and it, it gave me so much joy and it reads to me like a movie script almost. I would give anything to be on the team to help adapt that into a movie because I think it would play so well with so many different demographics. It's so fun. You don't have to be bisexual to appreciate the comedy in it. But for me, being bisexual, it was like another level of this is amazing because it's just fun. It's it's so chaotic that you decide to be this guy's fake fiance and you go to this like country house and you find out that his sister is a mysterious woman who you had a one night stand with about a year ago. That That's like a perfect premise. It's so good. It's while you were sleeping, but like lesbian version of that. That's yeah. who Jack is. <laughs> And Allison's wonderful. She's so great. I met her at Steamy Lit Con and it was amazing. She asked for a picture with me and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> it was, I, I almost cried because I've been talking to her since 2021. Like when she was the first author to ever follow me. So I love her. Oh. She, she's delightful. I did my first publishing project on the Charm Offensive and how I thought it was going to be like a huge book. And it ended up being a pretty big book, especially for her debut author. Yeah. For book number four, I picked Not the Girl You Married by Indy J. Christopher. Yep. I love this one. This one's a couple years old. None of these are very old because I haven't been reading romance for that long. More yeah. like about, I think, five years. I think I think you got, but honestly, rom-coms, the way the rom-coms that we see now today, like they start in 2018, like 2018, 2017. So you're fine. Like the ones I, like the rom-com, yes, the indie book talk darlings are from 2016, 2017, because that's what I was reading. <laughs> but like these rom-coms that we're mentioning, traditional published, beautiful illustrated covers that typically see, like they didn't come until 2018. Like The Hating Game yeah. was the first one out of it. And then everything else came after that. Yeah. And I will say Teacher of the Year, a lot of people think it's traditionally published because Emma Wardell has done such good job yeah. with the promotion and everything, but that is also indie, which I love. Yeah. Um, but Not the Girl You Married by Andy J. Christopher. I've met Andy. She's what part of the DC author squad. Yeah. And she's so cool. And she's also one of the many lawyers turned romance authors. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's so much fun. It's it's a reversed version of 10 things, how to lose a guy in 10 days. Yeah which I loved as a movie. So it's, there's a lot of like high jinx because they both are trying to, she's trying to keep him and he's trying to lose her. Yeah. So that just creates like an amazing dynamic. And I just think it's so funny. It's amazing. I love it. Yeah. And then book five is The Love Wager by Lynn Painter. Yep. I think it's Lynn Painter. Yep. Right. It's Lynn. Yeah. Yeah. By Lynn. I met her at Simi Lacan too, and she was lovely, but the book is just so much fun and the comedy is also like a lot of these on this list the comedy is inherent in how awkward dating can be yeah. as someone who hasn't dated a lot myself but has been surrounded by it with lots of friends and has done a bit of it myself dating is a very awkward thing in a lot of ways and all of these books have in common that they have this thing is awkward, but funny things can happen. And these funny moments can create like these beautiful romances. But The Love Wager is literally rooted in that because it's about these two trying to date other people and going through the motions of trying to find love, but then they end up finding love with each other, which is always super cute. Mm -hmm. um, and it's spicy too. All of these are not spicy. I would say that Kiss Her Once For Me is not very spicy it's a bit more closed door but it still definitely has some spice but yeah those are the ones I picked there are so many good ones but these are the ones that first came to mind and the ones that I go back and reread because that's what determines a good rom-com for me is ones that I will reread for peak comedy I almost put The Roommate on here too yeah Rosie because that book is so good but <laughs> I wanted to pick something else well, I love you, them. You still mention it. So I still <laughs> mention it. No, and there's other ones too. I think a proposal they can't refuse is a rom com, but I yeah. already talked about that last time I was here. Yeah. And I think I also talked about The Wedding Crasher, which is definitely a rom com, but again, yeah. I talked about last time. So it's, there's like a few books. Like there's so many good ones. And this is not even getting into historical because I love historical. You have to bring me on for historical one day. We'll like, do a historical. 
<laughs> I haven't done historical. I haven't read historical in a while. So I do need, I need, need a refresher. That was like a big 2020 era. I was like reading, actually, no, I read the Bridgertons in 2019. And then I went back to historical and did like a whole thing. I, at one point I was going to do a podcast, a historical podcast, historical romance podcast with Chloe Lisa. And my friend Ad, we were, we were in talks about doing a historical romance podcast. We were like 2020, that's all we were consuming. It's like Bridgerton. Yeah. We're like, oh my God, <laughs> you know? No, I get it. Let, tw- my friend Jackie, Purposely Imperfect, yeah. I love her. She's the best. She made so much fun of me because in summer of 2022, all I read was rom- historical romance, historical yeah. romance after historical romance. It yeah. was a problem. <laughs> and I still, if I find a historical romance I like, I will read it till the day I die. I have read Never Met a Duke Like You by Amelie Howard, who that hasn't even come out yet. It comes out in November. I've read it at least 15 times. I have a problem. I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> it's a clueless retelling. It's Emma inspired. It has neurodiversity rep, but in historical, it's I'm in love with the Duke of Graydon. I just can't, like when I find something I'm obsessed with, I can't stop talking about it. And that's the thing with all these books I've mentioned is I would vouch for all of them. And if people tell me they hate them, I would listen to them and hear them out, but I would severely, strongly disagree. <laughs> and I would point out why I like it so much. Cause I have heard some people saying they didn't like some of these and I was like, not personally offended but personally confused I would say it's all good <laughs> well yeah tell us where you can find me online yeah so you can find me online everywhere at chick lit is the shit that's just chick as in like c-h-i-c-k lit as in l-i-t is the and then shit as in the curse word and you can I have a blog chickalooseofshit.com where you can sign up for my virtual events you can download my study Laura so gracefully mentioned and yeah just always dm me if you listen to this and you're like oh I heard you on the podcast please dm me because that's always really cool and just be like hey I heard you on the podcast and I'll be like oh my god look at me I'm famous (laughs) awesome thank you for being the show Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. If you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share with friends, subscribe, rate, and review the show. This is the easiest way to support the podcast. For a list of books mentioned and other book recommendations, please visit whatreadnextblog.com. Thank you so much for listening and happy reading.